QuickBooks Enterprise 2021. Two businesses and personal bookkeeping in one QuickBooks file using classes, revenue, invoicing, and classes. Get ready because we're going to boldly account where no accountant has accounted before with QuickBooks Enterprise 2021. Here we are in our practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. In prior presentations, we set up our accounts. We set up our classes. We're focusing in on three different groups, which you could think of as three different locations or two different businesses and a personal side of things that we want to be breaking out. And we're going to be doing so with the use of the classes. So let's take a look at our chart of accounts by going to the lists dropdown chart of accounts and you'll see down here we're focusing in on the revenue side of things last time we entered transactions that would basically be flowing through or we're going to assign them from the checking account meaning we're waiting till they clear the bank and then we're assigning them either to the one business or location the other business or location and then to personal revenue say w2 type web revenue as it goes through the bank account now we're going to add a little bit of complexity here we're going to go back to the home page and say, well, now let's say that we have a business or multiple businesses that have to invoice people. Now, remember that uh, it depends on the business as to whether you're invoicing. You may well have one business where you invoice, say, a bookkeeping business or a law firm or something like that. And, and then the other business maybe is like gig work or something like that. And you, you're getting money directly from a PayPal. And, that, and in that situation, you can clearly distinguish the revenue streams from the two individuals one because you, you can have to be collecting with regards to the invoices allocating that to another account in another class the other you would be then getting from uh like like a paypal or something like that and you can clearly see the source of that and differentiate those two by class and or by account obviously w2 income then would be clearly easy to see it would be very standard uh each each time you get paid and uh, so then you can you can break that one out very easily as well. Now you might have two such two places where two businesses are invoicing. So you have a husband and wife that have two medical practices that are different, possibly have do, two different client lists. Then it would get more complex because then uh, as you enter your invoices, you want to make sure that you're you're breaking out or allocating the proper invoice to the proper business account, and that would get more complex, doable to do, but a bit more complex. It will also result in your customers if we go to our drop down up top in our customer list the customer list becomes much more important when we are dealing with uh, collections i made this a little bit larger by dragging these three dots out so if you if you're tracking customers for multiple different businesses in the one quickbooks file then you're gonna have one customer list we can't really go to two different sections for different customer lists and we can't indicate as easily just in the customer name which business we would be allocating to again not a big problem if one business is something like gig work or something like that and the other business you have accounts receivable but if you have two businesses running through the receivables then you got to make sure you're distinguishing out the customers now if i double click on a customer we could then go up top and say indication in each customer and say like this is for b1 and put that in the customer name to make it clear there we can also add into an, another field, an additional field down here, which we can we can add a field possibly that would be uh, locating or saying that's for customer one or two in that in that way as well. And we might be able to run reports then that would be tied to that particular field a little bit more easily. But when we just look at this the straight list here, then we're going to have basically one list which we can then try different sorting filtering options uh, when we're looking things up by customer. Now, when we set the customer up, we're going to be wanting to make sure that we assign the customer to the proper business, assigning it, in our case, to business one or business two. One way you can do that is to set the class's default by customer, which we talked about before, which means you'd go to the edit dropdown, preferences, and then you can go to, a, to the accounting company preferences. And instead of setting the preference as an account, you could set by name. And then every time you, you go to a customer, it will automatically track to the, the business one or business two in our case for the class meaning if i make an invoice it will it'll track it by who is is getting the money who i'm getting the money from in terms of what biz, which business you should go to business one or business two we're going to use the account up top though because that applies out to the expenses well as well and what we're going to do is is set it up so that when you have the customer that has a repeat payment to you 
we're going to assign it to the proper account, business one account, business two revenue account. And as long as we're assigning them out to the proper account, then, uh, then it'll memorize the transactions for that, for that particular customer. And the account will then be driving whether it goes into class B1 or B2 in our case. So let's see how this might work. If we were going to go to the home page and we're going to say, I want to create a uh, invoice and we're going to say, let's say this is for customer, customer number seven. Now creating that. Now, if we wanted to set this up, I might, I might set up in the name. I could say this is for B1. Now that's going to be a bit burdensome. If I have to print this out to someone in a name field where, where it's going to populate in the name field to the customer. So you want to be careful in terms of will that, you know, whether what you want to show up on basically the invoice, but if we set it there, then it'll show up in the list. The other thing we can think about doing is going to the added information here and possibly using the define fields. And I could say this is going to be for B1. So I'm actually going to label it business. And then I'm going to check off the customer vendor employee trans and list. And so I'm going to say, okay, gives us a pop-up. You are changing the label of a custom field, which already uh, is already in use. Data already entered for this field will remain unchanged. If you are changing the meaning of this field, you may wish to choose a currently unused field instead. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, and say, okay. So there we have that. So now we have our, our custom field, which I'm going to say here is B1. And that could help us out with some filtering options as well. So I'm going to go, okay. Also note that if we set up this B1 in the, in the customer name, if I preview the invoice, if I go, let me, let me preview what the invoice will look like. It's not in here. It's not in the bill too. So it's not on the invoice. And just, let's just recap why that is. If I go to the, the customer center again, double click on the customer. I put the B1 up top up here, but it's not included in the, in the invoice bill to item down below. So that means if you could distinguish then in that way, you can have the customer name up top different than the name that's going to apply on the invoice. And that be, could be another way you can kind of uh, distinguish these two. All right. Closing that back out. If we then go back to the invoice, uh, we're going to say the class. Now I'm not going to assign a class here because I'm going to do it by the account that will be utilized. We're going to then say that we want an item. So I'm going to set up an item. This is going to be the items that we're going to sell. Now, again, if there, another way you could set up the custom items in QuickBooks Enterprise is to use the item to be the one that's going to track which class it's going to be going to. But we're using an account in order to do that. So I'm going to say this is going to be item uh, two for, let's say this is for B1. And I'll keep the rate as is. And then I want to make sure to assign it to the uh, B1 account. So it's going to be the B1 account that it's going to. So I'm going to say, okay. So there we have it. And let's just say that uh, the rate was 5,000 here. And so uh, you are changing your standard price. That's okay. And notice the class isn't automatically picking up from, from uh, the item because the item isn't assigning the class, but the account within the item is assigning the class. So it looks like I'm going to have to manually enter the class here, which shouldn't be a problem if, if I label the item on, on which item we're going to go to. But it would be nice if it could pick up the account and then assign the class out. So let's just say I don't assign the class right now and see what it will look like. And then we'll go back into here. I'm going to say save and close. Save and close. Uh, one or more fields have not been assigned. So it's given me the error saying you didn't assign the class. And I'm going to say save it anyways. And then if I go to my income statement, reports drop down, company and financial, take a look at my profit and loss by class. And changing the dates from 010121 to 123121. So now uh, we have the revenue here in unclassified. So it's not picking up the class even, even though I have the account go into the proper class because the item, it's not seeing it through the item. In other words, if I double click on this and I go into this field again, the fact that I have the item go into an account, the account is then assigned to a class isn't picking it up. So in order to hit the classes on, on the invoices, you would actually have to set the item or the customer up to be the custom field to, to be assigning the classes rather than the account. So there's pros and cons to that. I like to do the account might be more useful for the expenses side of things as we list out the expense side of things. So for this, for this then you'd have to always go in here and assign the class out to either B1 or B2. Now, if you only have one of the companies that are going to be assigning a class, that will be easy to do. And if you miss it, 
then you could just go back in just as we did here and assign out the class and it won't be a big problem. But uh, that's one more step you got to do as you enter the data. So we're going to say there it is and then it assigns it out to to the B1 class here. So if I go back to the to the home page, let's do it again. We're going to say, all right, let's create another invoice. And let's say this is going to be going to uh, customer eight, customer eight. And this is going to be B2 then, B2. I'll label it there. I'm going to set it up as well. And then I'm going to set it up as a B2 up here. I don't want B2 down here in the invoice though. So I can label it for myself, hopefully, and not and not show it on the invoice. And then I might want to go to that additional field once again. And we have this business field, which I'm going to say this is going to be now B2. Business field B2, I'm going to say OK. And then I want to apply the item. This is going to be item number three. This is going to be B2 item. So the fact that it's a B2 item means that it's going to be applied out to... It's going to tell me that it's going to be applied out to the account for revenue B2. So I'll assign this to B2 revenue. And then I'm going to say OK. And then we'll say that we have uh, 7.5 there. And then again, I'd have to assign the class out. The fact that I have the customer labeled for the class and I should be able to see it within the item that I set up should be an indication for me to assign the class. And if I miss it, it will go into that unclassified area and we can then just double click on it and find it again. So I'm going to say B2. But again, the trade off here, the other way you could do this is to, is to assign the default class by item or to assign the default class by name. And then you can assign either the name or the item instead of the account. So there's pros and cons to, you know, which one of those three you want to use. So I'm going to say save it and close it. And then if I go to my profit and loss by class, so now we have that one assigned, went into this uh, B2 account there. So there we have the 7,500. That looks good. However, note that uh, these, two, these two accounts also are going to be hitting the balance sheet. So now let's consider the balance sheet side of things, which is going to be in accounts receivable. So if I go to the reports drop down, company and financial, take a look at the balance sheet standard. And I'm going to change the dates. Let's do it up here so I can drill down on the data from 010121 to 123121. And then I'm going to say OK. So now we have this receivable. Now, now note that this receivable uh, is I have one receivable. And if I only have one of my businesses that is an accrual based business where I need to track receivables, not a problem. Like again, if the other were if the other business was gig work or something like that, I don't need to track the receivable. Not a problem. If I, if I want to have two businesses where I'm tracking the receivables, then I may want to break this out then into, into classes. And in enterprise, you can do that. You can have a, a balance sheet by class. It gets a little bit tricky with an accounts receivable though. So if I go to the reports drop down, and then if we go to the company and financial and we take a look at the balance sheet by class only there, if you're talking about uh, the enterprise, then I'm going to change the dates up top, customizing the reports from 010121 to 123121 we're going to say okay and okay so it broke out our accounts receivable nicely we have one account however that it then broke out between the classes and so if i double click on this item here double click on this item you'll see that we assigned the class to b2 we assigned it to b2 here so that happened on the balance sheet side and the income statement side of things but if so if i close this back out and i close this back out then when I run the, the report tracking by customer, if I go back up top and I say I want to see the, uh, the receivables by customer and I want to see the balance detail, customer balance detail, we're going to see the items for both uh, customers for both classes in one report. Now, the other thing we could, we could do is we could say, okay, if I'm tracking two receivables, maybe I want to double, double check this and have another account, another accounts receivable account, so a B1 account and a B2 account. So for example, we could go to the lists drop down, shard of accounts. We have the accounts receivable here. Maybe I want to assign that to B1 accounts receivable. And then the second one, maybe 1200 or 12,000 for the second one. So I might say, let's edit this one. And let's say that this is going to be accounts receivable for B1, B1. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to say, save it and close it. And then we might want another one like 1200 account rise up, account rise up. 
And then we're going to say this is going to be an accounts receivable continue. And this will be 12. Oh, oh, oh. And this is going to be accounts receivable B2. So now we got accounts receivable B2. I'm going to save it and close it. So now we got those side by side. And then if I go back to my balance sheet by class, I'm going to update this, say okay. So now the second one, the second accounts receivable, I'd like to break it out into not only a separate class, but also possibly a separate account. So I could double click on this now, double click on this item. And then I can choose between the accounts receivable we want to track. So now I'm going to say I'd like to track this completely in another accounts receivable so that I have my balance sheets now lining up in two different accounts and two different classes. And then I'm going to say save it and close it. And say yes, and then close this out. Let's do it. Let's close this out and don't show me that again. And yes, and then okay. And so there we have that. So now we have it in two different accounts here that are broken out. Now, if I go back to my reports up top, look at the the customers and receivables, uh, customer balance detail account. So we still have the two customers on one report, but now we can filter it by account. So I could go up top and go to customize, and then I go to filters, and we could say that we want to customize or, or filter by account, not all accounts receivable here, but choosing one or the other accounts receivable. I want accounts receivable for B1 and then OK. And now we could see a list for just B1. I can then customize up top filters. Say I want to see just accounts receivable for B2 and then just see the accounts receivable for B2, which of course will line up to the 7,500 that is, is on the balance sheet by class. So that works pretty well. Now let's lose, use our filtering option again for that custom field. If I go to my company dropdown or customer dropdown and look at the customer center, and let's say I want to I wanna look at my customers now just for B1 or B2 business, and I set up that custom field to do so, we could then go to the, the drop down here and look at custom field, the custom field that we set up. And then I could say uh, custom field that we want. We want the custom field. And then I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to search for, say, B1. B1, search it. And now we have the B1 items there in the custom field. I could say, OK, let's search for custom field. We want all common. I'm going to say custom field. B2, and then we could we could search in that way. So that's another way we can kind of filter and make our make our list a little bit more manageable for two different businesses. So let's close this out and enter enter just a couple more just to get get a feel for it. If we go back to the home page and let's set up another invoice, and I'm gonna say this is gonna be for customer number eight, and I'll call it B2 this time. Customer eight B2. We're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and set it up in more detail and then a customer number eight i'm going to remove the b2 down below so it's indicated on my side but not on the actual invoice i'm going to then go down to the added information in the custom field over here and say this is going to be b2 and then i'm going to say uh okay so we have that and then i'm going to say this is item and we'll say this is item for b2 and we'll say this is going to be uh 14 000. So I'm going to say, and now if I don't assign the class here, I got to assign the class and, and it should be going then for B2, the customer. If I hit the drop down up top, notice I need to now assign the proper accounts receivable, which is going to be B2. And hopefully next time we enter something for customer eight, it will then pick the proper accounts receivable. And then the class, we'd have to pick the proper class here, which is going to be then B2. If it doesn't pick up the class, then we'll be able to see that because it'll be going to the to the unclassified account. So if I save that and close it, and then let's do it one more time. Let's go into the invoice and say customer number eight B two that we just set up. You could see now it's going to the to the B two account, which is the last one we had open. Uh, so or so I'm not sure if it's driven by the last one we had open or if it's being driven by the fact that we had. Uh, we assigned it to that account last time. We'd have another invoice or an item B2. And this one I'm not going to classify. I'll keep it as unclassified and then we'll pick that one up. And then I'm going to say save and new. Let's do it one more time. 
Uh, so another invoice, I'm going to say keep the number. Uh, one or more items have not been assigned to a class. I'm going to save it anyways. And then, so it gives you those pop-ups to help you to assign it to the class. But we're going to say, now I'm going to say customer, uh, let's say, let's pick up customer seven, which is B1. And this one, notice it's still picking up the B2 accounts receivable. So we'd have to switch back and forth to make sure that we're tracking it to the proper accounts receivable if we want to have two accounts receivable that will be that we will be working with and then i'm going to say that's on there this is going to be this is going to be item for b1 and we'll say this is uh 19 000. and again i won't assign the class and i'll see how i can pick that up if i miss the class so i'm going to save it and close it save it anyways and then if we go to our profit and loss by class We'll see this one's going to be easy for us to reassign because once again, it's an unclassified. If I double click on anything in unclassified, I need to classify it. If I find it, then I can see here that it's applied to B1. I could see the item, which should be, I know which one to apply it to. So I'm going to say, all right, this should be B1. That's going to B1. I'm going to save it and close it. Save it and close it. So that one's been assigned out. And then this one, again, it's, I could see it's in B2 as well by account. So there's multiple ways we could check it. So I just go, okay, I just need to reassign that one. Double clicking on it, double clicking on it. This one's going to be going to B2. So I'm going to say save it and close it, save it and close it. And we can reassign that out. The balance sheet's a little bit more tricky because if I go to the balance sheet up top, it should then break out by, by the class. So if I misclassify something, for example, then I should be able to see it given the fact that I have, I have the invoice, uh, the, two, the two accounts setting up and the class set up. So for example, if I made an error in the data input and I created an invoice and we said this is going to be going to custom, because I have currently B1 on the receivable side. So if I picked up something that goes to B2 here and I go to the wrong receivable, and then I go to the item down here and I'm going to say, this is an item for B2 and we'll pick up the amount for 4,000. And I'm going to say, this is going to B2. So everything's going to B2, but the accounts receivables go into the wrong place. It's going to B1. So, so again, if I had one accounts receivable, then it would break it out by class. And I, but if I want to track two separate accounts receivables, then, then I'm going to have to say, okay, that's going to the wrong receivable. If I save it and close it, Let's see what happens on the balance sheet here. If I go to the balance sheet by class, balance sheet by class, then we can see it there. We can see there's a problem because it's going into the accounts receivable assigned to B1 and I have an amount there. That amount should be zero. And that's kind of the double check you have by having two accounts oftentimes. So I'm going to say, ah, that one went to the wrong because it, it should be over here because it's it's going to this account. So that account only has B, B1. So I'm going to go, ah, that went, went to the wrong spot. And I could double click on that and basically assign it then to the B2 and then save it and close it. Save it, save it. And now, now that one's going to be properly assigned out. So that, that the fact that we have the account and the, and the class gives us kind of that double check. And then we can always drill back down on it in the go into anything that is not classified to change to the proper class. So here's where we stand now on the balance sheet. Here's where we are on uh, the income statement. I'll, I'll print these out and we'll also have a backup file if you wanna just start from this point forward and, and look at the next component in the practice problem.